welcome. We're calling this uh, Development with Impact uh, because we want to talk about our experiences both with management development uh, and also with how management development can impact in the workplace to really change how things are being done. And we're talking about 15 years of experience in uh, really changing uh, how management is practiced and how people drive change in their organizations. Uh, we've made a lot of progress over the years, and I'll talk about it for about 20 minutes. Um, everybody loves learning. Uh, everybody loves to learn, and everybody loves social learning, especially, which is when you learn in groups. The trouble with most management education and management development is that people learn together, but then they go back to work alone. Um, and it becomes very difficult even to capture the learning, let alone to drive some change in the organization. You kind of sit there uh, in the class very often as a lone wolf, and you end up back in your organization with your people, but you're the only one who's changed. So, so we send changed people back to unchanged organizations, and it doesn't uh, work too well. Um, Fifteen years ago, we set out to change that, to, uh, to rethink uh, particularly MBA programs, uh, but also management development programs, and connect management education with management development, and, and, and connect the two together to organization development, so that we could really have some serious impact, and, and, and people would get much more enthusiastic about the learning process and, and about how they're driving change in the organization. Um, so, as I said earlier, there were two parts. The first part was development and finding new ways to really make development stimulating for managers. Uh, and I think we've succeeded well in that uh, over these years. Um, and the second part was impact, how you bring that into change in the organization. And we've been working on that with some successes over the course of those 15 years. But it was really, it's really been in the last little while that I think we've cracked the nut of development, uh, of, of organization development and impact of learning. So let me talk about the, the, uh, the notion of development first and the notion of impact second. How do managers learn best? Um, how do people learn best? But how do managers in their own context learn best? And for that I want to take you to a schoolroom in Calgary, Alberta, a schoolroom of eight-year-olds. Um, this is an article that appeared in the Harvard Educational Review uh, called Managing on the Twelfth, and it was about, the, it comes from a line in Alice in Wonderland, and it's about how those kids were learning. And, 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 and what it's about is an incredibly fired up group of eight-year-olds uh, because of two very simple ideas. Number one is the teachers were capturing learning in terms of their own experience. For example, one of the children had, had lived with his parents in Mas with the Maasai uh, tribe in Africa uh, and had just come back uh, to Calgary. Um, and they did a project in the classroom where they used that child's experience. So not only that child, but the other ch children through him could get really enthusiastic. Uh, they did another uh, project on the weather because the kids could relate to that. And they were learning together in a kind of project way as a group, and it turned out to be very powerful. Um, the very same thing happens with managers. It's the very same philosophy that managers learn best when they reflect on their own experience in groups together. Um, and, and that's a very powerful way of learning. As we've discovered in a program we started in 1996 called the International Masters in Practicing Management. Um, it's only for managers because non-managers don't have experience in management and so they can't learn. That's why MBA programs and so on are so emphasized, so emphasized cases in theory because, because they have to use other people's experiences. Cases are other people's experience. Theory is capturing in some systematic way other people's experience. It's fine to bring cases and theory into the classroom. We do. But the big difference in the IMPM is we turn it over to the managers on their agendas in terms of their experience. And that's extremely powerful kinds of stuff. So they sit, they don't sit in rows, they sit at round tables, small groups in a flat classroom so they can go into and out of workshops at a moment's notice. So I can do something on uh, kind of how do you craft strategy as a learning process, for example, how do you, how, what's emergent strategy and so on, and they can in turn um, use that material uh, around the tables in terms of how, how they learn. 
we just did a workshop. I've just done three days of an EMBA program that we created at McGill along the lines of the IMPM, where they sit at the round tables and so on. It's a group of about 38 uh, people, uh, around, uh, mostly in their 40s. Um, and the enthusiasm and energy in the classroom when they start discussing things in terms of their own experience is, is just truly e extraordinary. Um, the first time we ran this idea, the idea of, of reflection and learning from your own, reflecting on your own experience and sharing it with others, uh, was the first module. The INPM runs as five modules uh, across, uh, of about 10 days each across a year and a half or so, across 16 months. Um, nowadays it's running in, uh, in five different places around the world. It, it starts in England and then it goes to Canada and then Bangalore, India and then Beijing, China and then, uh, and then uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It's, it's kind of BIC instead of BRIC, the, the uh, Brazil, India, China, no Russia. Um, the first time we ran it in England, uh, it, it just worked really well. People were very enthusiastic and at the end of the module, uh, 10 day module, uh, everybody was going around saying it was no, so nice to meet you and so on and so forth. And Alan Whelan, a sales manager in BT, uh, was going around saying it was so nice to meet myself. Uh, think of how powerful uh, management can become when managers really learn themselves and really get to know themselves, which is the whole philosophy uh, behind this program. Uh, very powerful kind, kinds of stuff. Uh, they do other things in the program that are related. For example, they bring in issues uh, that they're working with, grappling with at work. And they work on those issues together in a process we call uh, friendly consulting. In our healthcare version of the program called the IMHL, the International Masters for Health Leadership, uh, they bring in healthcare issues and they work together uh, with each other on their different issues. How do you close the gap between clinicians and administrators? for example, in healthcare. And we've also created an advanced leadership program, an ALP, which is a shorter program that runs about three one-week modules where company teams bring in issues in their company, kind of how do we motivate our first-line employees, how do we deal with environmental problems, whatever it is, and very systematically they do this friendly consulting uh, with each other uh, on those kinds of things. So. Overall, when we add all this up, we've really been able to deal with uh, and change uh, management development and, and combine it with management education and go past the conventional MBA model to a very different kind of model. And it works very, very well um, and so on. The, 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 the real nut we had to crack was the impact nut, how people carry that learning back to the workplace. Now people do, they, our, our participants carry the learning back and especially the ALP teams are able to carry that learning back. But there was still something missing and we weren't quite sure uh, what it was uh, until, until very uh, recently. Um, and um, so our whole philosophy, as I've said, is that managers learn best by reflecting in small groups socially uh, on their own experience and they learn from each other. So it's particularly heartening to us that the two breakthroughs recently in this impact idea came not from faculty but it came from managers uh, in the field who, who had to deal with that problem in a much more concerted way. And, and let me tell you these two stories of kind of how we cracked the nut of impact if you like. Phil is my, uh, Phil Lanier is my stepson and he was the uh, director of engineering for a Montreal high-tech firm and, and they had outsourced their uh, programming and Phil became, uh, and Phil's managers, Phil's uh, programmers had become managers and they were struggling. And Phil said, what should I do? Uh, and it was asking me what should he do and he had no budget to do it from, for training or any of that and, and, and not, nothing from HR. So he had to do it on his own. And, and basically I said, uh, well, you know, as you can predict, I said, why don't you get him around the table, uh, you know, periodically kind of sharing their experiences and how they're dealing with this. Uh, actually, Phil says that the first thing I said to him was to read my book, Managers, Not MBAs, and then I told him about the table. But anyway, Phil, Phil got very enthusiastic uh, about this. He did it with a vengeance. Uh, he had them meet informally over lunch for about 90 minutes, once every couple of weeks. Um, he said it had to be fun or they wouldn't keep coming back. They did. They ran, this went on for two years. 
Uh, Phil spun off other groups. Uh, Phil created other groups in his company and some of the people in his group created their own groups. It was kind of like an Amway thing except nobody was collecting anything from each other. They were just helping each other learn. Um, and, it, and it went on uh, with tremendous enthusiasm and they started to drive change in their organization because they were intact teams. These were around the table where people worked together normally even though once every couple of weeks they were taking off a lunch uh, to learn informally. So they, so they started to uh, drive change in the organization. Uh, um, and this worked so well uh, that we incorporated the whole activity. We call it uh, coachingourselves.com. Phil, Phil runs it and Phil's the kind of lead behind it. Uh, and basically companies can go on the website, download material, topics, subject matter, and just work together as a group uh, and build each other it's a kind of community. Uh, I think community is a key idea about how you learn together um, and, and, and start to drive change in the organization. So we've got companies like Cafe Pacific and Canon and Fujitsu and, uh, and so on and so forth um, doing the, um, doing the uh, coaching ourselves and, and, uh, and doing it in, in, in fascinating uh, and different kinds of ways. Um, uh, so in coaching ourselves, you're not alone. You're in, with a natural group. Uh, you're not coming back from a development program. So let's go back to the IMPM for a minute, the, the Masters in Practicing Management. How do we bring these ideas together? Well, we had a meeting of a, of a couple of the company representatives uh, of the IMPM. We've had companies like Lufthansa and Fujitsu and Alcan, now Rio Tinto and LG and so on. Um, in the IMPM for many, many years, uh, uh, most of those have been in uh, for all 15 years or almost all 15 years, which I think uh, probably is unprecedented uh, in management uh, programs. Um, in, at the representatives meeting we had Kirsten um, uh, Weindemann from Lufthansa and Daniel Loudon uh, from Rio Tinto. Uh, and we were discussing impact and how can we, because the people, even though those companies have, have often sent teams, groups of people on the IMPM, they've come from different parts of the company. So when they go back, even though they're, they interconnect, uh, they're still uh, kind of in their own workplace when they get back. It's kind of like I've arrived back and, and the people around me don't have a clue what I did. Uh, and aren't relating necessarily to what I did. Sometimes they're even, not in those companies necessarily, but sometimes they're even sarcastic about, oh yeah, you were, while we were sweating away, you were having all that great food and so on. Um, so they're really on their own when we get back. And Danielle said, why don't we combine the Coaching Ourselves group idea with the IMPM idea so that when you're in the IMPM as an individual, you have a a kind of a virtual group back at work, your own people, it might be your peers or your colleagues or people who are reporting to you in your own unit, why doesn't that group welcome you back and share in the learning? And we can even use coaching ourselves topics uh, to replicate things that are happening in the IMPAM classroom back at work. So, so now you're not coming back alone, you're coming back with a group that's welcoming you back, enthusiastic about sharing your learning and about carrying that learning into the organization. In effect, a company that's sending one person or teams of individuals, each of those individuals is backed up by a group back at work. So send one and in effect you're training five, six people, which is a kind of an interesting format. But much more powerful is the learning is being captured by five or more people so that you have a team that can start driving really significant change in the organization. Uh, and the next running of the IMPM, which starts in June, is going to uh, uh, suggest that people create those teams to, uh, to capture their learning. Um, and, and those groups can do all kinds of things. They can welcome the people on the managerial exchanges uh, into the uh, company or the organization. They can even go back to class uh, sometimes. They can get a diploma as they're doing the program, and so on and so forth. Um, we think this could be really a major and perhaps the major breakthrough in impact in management uh, education and management development, carrying it into organization development. So let me just summarize uh, quickly on, on the lessons we've learned about management learning in, in kind of five points. 
um, and then uh, and then uh, and then I'll I'll close off. Um, number one, organizations function best as communities of human beings. Those tables are communities. The coaching ourselves groups are community and communities and little communities, and together they can build the organization up as a big community. And we really need to recapture the sense of community in organizations. And development can enhance that sense of community. Second, middle managers are really key to this. We talk so much about change being driven by the from the top and, and all those things. I firmly believe that a lot of major change, and I include strategic change here, comes from the middle. Comes from managers who, who both know what's going on on the ground because they're closer to it, but also are able to see the big picture. And especially when they can look at their company or their organization together as a group, they can really start to see where change is necessary. And we can start to realize that a lot of major change could be coming from middle ranks. So, so the purpose of development is to build that kind of confidence and enthusiasm and commitment on the part of middle managers. The third point is that we need to emphasize a style of engaging management more than heroic leadership, more than the single lone wolf who goes off and gets trained as an individual. Uh, we need to emphasize engaging management and how managers can get engaged. And the purpose of development is to engage the managers so they can engage other people. And that's exactly how these impact teams work. You go in the program as an individual, but you've got that, that team back home uh, through which you're, you're, you're bringing the learning back. Fourth point, effective managers are reflective in the context of taking action. It's the, it's the relationship between reflection and action that really creates change in, in organizations and really creates change in management styles. And the purpose of training and development is really to combine reflection and action. So the first part of my talk was about how we use reflection and training, and the second part is about how you bring it to action with impact. And my last point is that development works best as social learning in small groups um, in order to provide meaning to managers' experiences. Saul Alinsky, uh, who wrote a book called Rules for Radicals, once, once said that we don't have experiences in life, we have happenings. Happenings become experiences when we reflect on them and learn from them and thereby make changes in, in those, uh, in those uh, activities. So uh, we're welcoming our 15th class of the IMPM in June of 2010. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful group. We're going, uh, we have in the past gone to uh, 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 Japan and France and Korea, and that worked uh, lovely. And, uh, but now we wanted to enhance the program. So, so it's going to be BIC, as I said. We're going to be holding modules in Montreal and in England. Uh, uh, the Lake District and Lancaster, and then we're going to uh, to Bangalore in India, and then we're going to um, to uh, uh, Beijing in China, and then Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Always taught by schools in those places. We don't. We're not voyeurs. We don't go and carry our programs with us. These are taught and developed and worked on by by schools in all those places, uh, top schools in all those places, and also with people in the class. Uh, from those places. So if you click on my website, uh, uh, Mintzberg, uh, M-I-N-T-Z, or Z-B-E-R-G dot org, or IMPM, uh, you can click on mine to all the other programs, or you can go on to IMPM uh, dot org, and uh, uh, we look forward to working with any of you uh, who get as enthusiastic as we are and as our um, participating managers are. Thank you very much.